Good afternoon. Welcome to BBC News School Report. I'm Scott. And I'm Shannon. Our headlines today are... Afghan conflict effect on British Muslims. A Rochdale nightclub gets shut down after eight men are arrested on suspicion of murder. With next week's sport relief coming up, we look at how much has already been raised. And finally, North Chatterton are undergoing the construction of a £22 million new school. We look how this has benefited everybody. Now over to Maureen for more on the Afghanistan conflict. A young person's opinion is always an interesting one. As a young generation, what beliefs and concerns do they have today? Today, I'm speaking to a member of the Hindu community, Veena. Hi, Veena. Hello. Recently in America, there has been a lot of crumb burning taking place. What is your opinion on this? I believe that the crumb burning is very disrespectful to the communities over there, as it is a very important um, manuscript for them to follow, and I believe that they use it in their everyday lives to um, know how to conduct themselves. Um, it, I believe that they'll be very angry and upset about how they're being treated, and I believe that is also right. So, in comparison to the Quran, how do you think the Gita is respected? Um, I think it is respected um, more over here than maybe the Quran is. Um, I just think it's a bit more well known. Um, but I believe that different communities will know about them at different levels. Um, so uh, maybe society could understand a bit more about both of the um, holy books. So personally, have you ever witnessed any religious intolerance yourself? Yes, yeah, some racism on streets or um, sometimes you see it on uh, television. But um, I think it's because some people don't understand about the um, holy book and what it is for and how we use it. That's sometimes when uh, racial intolerance comes up. So personally, as a British Hindu, have you ever been victim yourself of any racism? Yes, yeah, sometimes, but sometimes you have to explain to people why it's wrong and it's, we're not different because of how we live our lives. It's just another way of how we live. So, previously I've mentioned that a young person's opinion is always interesting and can be quite reliable, especially as they are the younger generation. Do you have any suggestions and ways that we could have a better understanding? Um, maybe in the schools they could teach more about maybe different religions, not just the ones that we everyone knows the name of. Um, communities could sometimes get together on different days and discuss matters that are important to young people and adults in the community. So at the moment, how much do you think you learn about other religions? Uh, we learn a lot about Hinduism, Christianity and Islam, but maybe there are some other religions that we, schools need to take into account about um, how they will feel if we don't learn about their religion, as it is very important that we learn about other people's religion to understand how they live. Thank you for your interesting opinion. What's your opinion on the Afghanistan conflict and how it's affecting racism today? I think it's bad because it makes people have bad ideas about the people in Afghanistan, but really, I bet they're not that bad, you know. They're probably just like you and me. Yeah. Yeah. That's a very interesting opinion. So how do you think that um, British Muslims are feeling today? I think that they feel pretty low about it because, like, the Afghanistan people are the ones being targeted. Well, they're not doing any trouble, you know. What is your opinion on the Afghanistan conflict and how it's affecting racism today? Um, I think that the wars which are going on in Afghanistan are having a massive effect on the public in Britain. Racism is becoming a lot more used and it needs to be put to a stop. So how do you think that British Muslims are feeling right now? Uh, I think they'd be feeling segregated and abused by the whole public. And things like the British Defence League, it, it just needs to be put to a stop, it's not right. So different political parties are some a cause of this as well, do you think? Such as the EDL and BNP? Yeah, I personally believe that. Um, it's not right. No one should be segregated like that. What is your opinion on the Afghanistan conflict and how it's affecting racism today? I think it's kind of getting out of control and there's a lot of issues with other, like, other cultures, um, especially towards Muslims. Yeah. So how do you think that British Muslims are feeling right now? Are they vulnerable? Are they okay? Do they uh, agree with this? I think some might feel vulnerable, some might feel insecure. 
but other than that, I don't think it really does. Okay, thank you. Evidently, Islam is the fastest growing religion in the world, but is Islam the religion to be disc discriminated against the most today? Today I'm talking to Hannah, a member of the Muslim community. So, Hannah, how do you think the Afghan war has affected racism in the UK? I think that because this war has been so publicised and so public in the media, um, a negative light has been shone on the Muslim community, and I don't think it's fair, and it's just um, blown racism out of proportion. Pocket. Alright. What? You dropped it. Evidently, Islam is the fastest growing religion in the world, but is Islam the religion to be discriminated against the most? Today I'm talking to Hannah, a member of the Muslim community. Hi Hannah. So, how do you think that the Afghan war has affected racism in the UK today? I think that because the war has been so publicised in the media over the years, I think it's blown racism against the Muslim community out of proportion and shone a negative light on the whole situation. So what do you mean about the media blowing out of proportion? Well I think it's very biased and one-sided so it's not really capturing the whole story so it's very unfair. So what do you think the other side of the story may be? I think that the community might feel targeted and vulnerable so it's not really capturing what they feel. So when you imply vulnerability, what exactly do you mean? Well, people are being killed, and these are innocent people. So they're not doing anything except believing in what they want to believe in, and that's wrong. On the topic of innocent people, recent reports have confirmed that an American soldier has murdered innocent Afghan civilians, including nine children. How did you feel when you heard this news? Um, I was outraged, and as I said before, I feel very targeted. As a Muslim myself, I think it's disgusting, and it shouldn't be excused. Okay, thank you very much for your opinions. Thank you, Mary. There has been a number of arrests in Rochelle today. Over to Matthew and Salma for more. Good afternoon, my name is Salma. And my name is Matthew. John Lee Barrett, a 31 year old man who'd been murdered by a single stab wound in his back during a private Christmas Eve party at St Clair's Bar and Nightclub on Drake Street, Rochdale. In the early hours of this morning, Eight men were arrested under the suspicion of murdering John Lee Barrett. The men were aged between 20 and 30, all from different locations around the Greater Manchester area. 22 warrants have been dispatched in areas including Moston, Mossside, Fallowfield, Blakely and other areas in Greater Manchester. We tried to get a statement from the police about these events, but it was not possible. After three long months of investigating and looking through thousands of CCTV footage, to find John Barrett's killer, they arrested eight men on the suspicion of his murder. It was thought that 10 to 20 men gave a crash pass before the brutal fight broke out in St Clair's nightclub. St Clair's nightclub in Rochdale has been recently closed down due to the murder. Mr Barrett was the nephew of Pat, Bar Pat Barrett, who, was, who had been a professional boxer since 1987. Now back to the studio for more news. Thank you, Matthew. In other news, Sport Relief commences on the 23rd of March. Over to Elise to find out more. Hello, this is Elise Hayward reporting for the BBC News School Report. Our story today is the Sports Relief Charity. Sport Relief is one of the most popular charities for raising money for children in poorer conditions in the UK and around the world. 3.4 million people die each year from water-related disease and 84% of these ch are children. But with your help from Sports Relief, from sports related activities and merchandise sponsorships, we can help to improve conditions in which these people live in. Celebrities like Eddie Izzard, Helen Skelton and John Bishop are all doing extreme events to raise millions of pounds for sport relief and with your support can continue to help the charity. Our PE teacher, Miss Wilmore, helps to organise sports relief activities around school and raise money. Here is the interview with Joe and Helen. Hi, this is Helen and Joe reporting for BUC News School Report. Hello, Miss Wilmore. Hello. How do you feel about sport relief? Well, I think it's a wonderful cause. All linked to comic relief, of course. And it's all especially good because it's to do with sport and everybody keeping active and fit and healthy, as well as helping other people around the world who uh, don't have what we have. Have we participated in any sport relief activities in school? Um, up until a couple of years ago, we had um, a lot of activities going on when it was in June. It was switched a few years ago to tie in with Comet Relief in March, um, which made it slightly a slightly bit more difficult for us to, to do something as a whole school because obviously there's lots of exams going on, the weather's not so reliable in March, 
The last time we had it in June, we had a whole school, everybody walked or ran a mile, including all the staff and the dinner ladies and the cleaners. Everybody joined in and we raised a lot of money, um, almost £2,000. Um, this year, we're going to be asking students if they would like to walk or run a mile on the Friday, the 23rd. And if they do, they're going to get one of these lovely certificates. Uh, and we're also going to encourage them to go and run or walk a mile at the organised sport um, relief activities, Alexandra Park in Oldham, um, Heaton Park, there are lots going on and of course there's a lot on TV, so there's a lot of awareness raising going on. So will you be doing anything? I am, I'm going to try and run a mile on the Friday at school and then I'll be doing it on Sunday in Rochdale. How much are you planning on raising? Myself personally, I will give as much as I can and in school we're going to ask for donations on the Friday. Pleasure. Back to the studio. Back to the studio. <laughs> Thank you, Elise. Locally, North Cheddarton are in the process of building a new school. Over to Abby and Megan to find out more. Hi, my name is Abby, reporting for the BBC News School Report. Today we are joined by our head teacher, Miss Clark, who has agreed to answer a few questions about North Cheddarton's brand new school. Hello, Miss Clark. Hello, Abby. What are you most excited about in moving to the new school? Well, I see the new school as a fantastic opportunity for every student and every member of staff at North Chatterton School to have an opportunity to get in here and be faced with brand new cutting edge facilities so that they can take learning forward and continue to deliver the very good results that North Chatterton built on in August 2011. Are the girls in the to do as well? The building's due to, to be handed over to the school on the 28th of August and then school will open to teachers uh, week beginning the 3rd of September. Everything at the moment is absolutely on track, which I'm delighted to be able to report. What new sort of equipment and facilities would be expected? Uh, well, there are 75 classrooms and each of those classrooms has what's known as interactivity. So teachers have the ability to access the internet and other links that will continue to transform and enhance learning in each of those spaces. On top of all of that, there are um, an, a brand new restaurant with the latest equipment, brand new performance spaces, and as you can see behind us, there is this fantastic exchange space which is enclosed and behind it are what's known as the Heller Upstairs, which is sitting and social space for all of our students. Um, Complementing all of that are staff work bases with the latest equipment and the opportunity to bring in each of the classrooms further new technologies to develop, transform and enhance learning. How do you think the new school will end? Well, I've just explained that um, we, it will be complemented with fantastic new technologies. Uh, communication, therefore, throughout the school will be better. Digital screens, a huge video screen behind me will enhance this uh, communal exchange space. And then within each of the classrooms, this opportunity to have accessibility to the internet and other links will continue to drive forward learning. But it's not just about new technologies, it's about um, top of the range of learning spaces, well ventilated, well lit, good furniture, uh, relevant resources, all of which will come together to build on what I know is the good high quality learning which is also taking place right now. And if we can deliver it in, dare I say, our temporary accommodation, Who's to say what that learning will be like when we move into this fantastic 20 new, £22 million pound new school? How much does the new school cost roughly then? Well, as I've just said, on average you're at about 20, approximately £22 million, pounds, um, give or take an odd pound or two. Um, that's what's been paid um, into this building school for the future project and it has delivered to us an enormous space for us to transform learning here at North Chapter School.
Why is the premium coming? Well, I thought it was a good opportunity. Uh, a move into the new school is a good time to reflect on all of our standards. Um, a lot of our competitors, schools up and down Broadway, are um, bringing blazers in in September. I didn't want North Chatterton to be left behind. I felt it was a good opportunity to look at the current uniform and take it up a notch. Uh, we consulted widely with our students, with our parents and with our staff. Overwhelmingly people wanted blazers bringing back in. Um, we're proud to have the North Chatterton, the Chatterton crest on those blazers and we felt it gave um, an added dimension to our business specialism. And on top of that, uh, we're also bringing in September a business dress for our sixth form students so that they can be seen to role model uh, young leadership throughout the school and can be seen as um, clear, there's a clear difference between a year 11 student and a year 12 student by the very nature of the way they're dressed. And I think that'll bring an added dimension to our school. Um, how do you think the students are going to react to the new uniform then? Well, I think the majority, um, we've been having seen it through the student council and the senior student council, they really like it. Um, there are different uh, skirts uh, in design, uh, cardigans, jumpers, there's a little bit of flexibility around it. Girls can have the opportunity to wear uh, the blue checked blouse or a shirt and tie, which is also new. All of Year 11 are going to be given a brand new tie, free so that they're seen as slightly different in the school. Um, I think, on the whole, our students will like the new uniform because we've listened to their comments in our design um, and, and how to take it forward. And finally, why will our school stand out from the rest of our schools? Well, I'm very proud um, about North Chatterton School and all that it stands for. I think that this new building gives us the platform to take learning seriously into the 21st century. I think this school will really embrace and transform learning by moving into this um, state-of-the-art environment. I think all of our students have the opportunity to seize the moment, to really drive their learning forward and be successful. And I also think that it provides a fantastic opportunity for our community, um, which gives them an opportunity to come in in the evenings, uh, and to promote lifelong learning and lifelong opportunity. I think it's a real defining moment for everybody that's connected with North Chatterton School and something that we should seize and really move forward with. And I look forward to moving everybody connected with the school into here in September 2012. Thank you, Miss Clark. Back to the studio now. Thank you, Abby. This has been Shannon and Scott reporting for North Chatterton on behalf of BBC News School Report. Thank you and good night.